April 25. David's Justice as King So David reigned over all Israel and did what was just and right for all his people. Joab, son of Zeruiah, was commander of the army. Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilud, was the royal historian. Zadok, son of Ahitub, and Ahimelech, son of Abiathar, were the priests. Sireah was the court secretary. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, was captain of the king's bodyguard. And David's sons served as priestly leaders. From First Chronicles So David reigned over all Israel and did what was just and right for all his people. Joab, son of Zeruiah, was commander of the army. Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilud, was the royal historian. Zadok, son of Ahitub, and Ahimelech, son of Abiathar, were the priests. Sireah was the court secretary. Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, was captain of the king's bodyguard. And David's sons served as the king's chief assistants. The Levite clans. The sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The descendants of Gershon included Libni and Shimei. The descendants of Kohath included Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. The descendants of Merari included Malai and Mushai. The following were the Levite clans listed according to their ancestral descent. The descendants of Gershon included Libni, Jahath, Zima, Joah, Ido, Zira, and Jeatharai. The descendants of Kohath included Aminadab, Korah, Asur, Elkanah, Abiasaph, Aser, Tehath, Uriel, Uzziah, and Shal. The descendants of Elkanah included Amasai, Ahimoth, Elkanah, Zophai, Nahath, Eliab, Jeroam, Elkanah, and Samuel. The sons of Samuel were Joel, the older, and Abijah, the second. The descendants of Merari included Malai, Libni, Shimei, Uzzah, Shimea, Hagia, and Asaiah. Aaron's descendants. The descendants of Aaron were Eleazar, Phineas, Abishua, Bukai, Uzai, Zerahiah, Meraiath, Amariah, Ahitub, Zadok, and Ahimaaz. The Temple Musicians. David assigned the following men to lead the music at the house of the Lord after the ark was placed there. They ministered with music at the tabernacle until Solomon built the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. They carried out their work, following all the regulations handed down to them. These are the men who served along with their sons. Heman, the musician, was from the clan of Kohath. His genealogy was traced back through Joel, Samuel, Elkanah, Jeroam, Eliel, Toa, Zuf, Elkanah, Mahath, Amasai, Elkanah, Joel, Azariah, Zephaniah, Tahath, Aser, Abiasaph, Korah, Izhar, Kohath, Levi, and Israel. Heman's first assistant was Asaph from the clan of Gershon. Asaph's genealogy was traced back through Barakiah, Shimei, Michael, Baasiah, Malchijah, Ethni, Zerah, Adaiah, Ethan, Zima, Shimei, Jahath, Gershon, and Levi. Heman's second assistant was Ethan from the clan of Merari. Ethan's genealogy was traced back through Kishai, Abdi, Moloch, Hashabiah, Amaziah, Hilkiah, Amzi, Bani, Shemer, Malai, Mushai, Merari, and Levi. Their fellow Levites were appointed to various other tasks in the tabernacle, the house of God. David's Kindness to Mephibosheth One day David asked, Is anyone in Saul's family still alive? Anyone to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? He summoned a man named Ziba, who had been one of Saul's servants. Are you Ziba? the king asked. Yes, sir, I am, Ziba replied. The king then asked him, Is anyone still alive from Saul's family? If so, I want to show God's kindness to them. Ziba replied, Yes, one of Jonathan's sons is still alive. He is crippled in both feet. Where is he? the king asked. In Lodabar, Ziba told him, at the home of Maker, son of Amiel. So David sent for him and brought him from Maker's home. His name was Mephibosheth. He was Jonathan's son and Saul's grandson. When he came to David, he bowed low to the ground in deep respect. David said, Greetings, Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth replied, I am your servant. Don't be afraid, David said. I intend to show kindness to you because of my promise to your father, Jonathan. I will give you all the property that once belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will eat here with me at the king's table. 
Mephibosheth bowed respectfully and exclaimed, Who is your servant that you should show such kindness to a dead dog like me? Then the king summoned Saul's servant Ziba and said, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons and servants are to farm the land for him to produce food for your master's household. But Mephibosheth, your master's grandson, will eat here at my table. Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Ziba replied, Yes, my lord the king, I am your servant, and I will do all that you have commanded. And from that time on, Mephibosheth ate regularly at David's table, like one of the king's own sons. Mephibosheth had a young son named Micah. From then on, all the members of Ziba's household were Mephibosheth's servants. And Mephibosheth, who was crippled in both feet, lived in Jerusalem and ate regularly at the king's table. David Defeats the Ammonites Some time after this, King Nahash of the Ammonites died, and his son Hanan became king. David said, I am going to show loyalty to Hanan, just as his father Nahash was always loyal to me. So David sent ambassadors to express sympathy to Hanan about his father's death. But when David's ambassadors arrived in the land of Ammon, the Ammonite commanders said to Hanan, their master, Do you really think these men are coming here to honor your father? No, David has sent them to spy out the city so they can come in and conquer it. So Hanan seized David's ambassadors and shaved off half of each man's beard, cut off their robes at the buttocks, and sent them back to David in shame. When David heard what had happened, he sent messengers to tell the men, Stay at Jericho until your beards grow out, and then come back, for they felt deep shame because of their appearance. When the people of Ammon realized how seriously they had angered David, they sent and hired 20,000 Aramean foot soldiers from the lands of Beth Rehob and Zobah, 1,000 from the king of Maacah, and 12,000 from the land of Tob. When David heard about this, he sent Joab and all his warriors to fight them. The Ammonite troops came out and drew up their battle lines at the entrance of the city gate, while the Arameans from Zobah and Rehob and the men from Tob and Maacah positioned themselves to fight in the open fields. When Joab saw that he would have to fight on both the front and the rear, he chose some of Israel's elite troops and placed them under his personal command to fight the Arameans in the fields. He left the rest of the army under the command of his brother Abishai, who was to attack the Ammonites. If the Arameans are too strong for me, then come over and help me, Joab told his brother. And if the Ammonites are too strong for you, I will come and help you. Be courageous. Let us fight bravely for our people and the cities of our God. May the Lord's will be done. When Joab and his troops attacked, the Arameans began to run away. And when the Ammonites saw the Arameans running, they ran from Abishai and retreated into the city. After the battle was over... Joab returned to Jerusalem. The Arameans now realized that they were no match for Israel. So when they regrouped, they were joined by additional Aramean troops summoned by Hadadezer from the other side of the Euphrates River. These troops arrived at Helam under the command of Shobak, the commander of Hadadezer's forces. When David heard what was happening, he mobilized all Israel, crossed the Jordan River, and led the army to Helam. The Arameans positioned themselves in battle formation and fought against David. But again, the Arameans fled from the Israelites. This time, David's forces killed 700 charioteers and 40,000 foot soldiers, including Shobak, the commander of their army. When all the kings allied with Hadadezer saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they surrendered to Israel and became their subjects. After that, the Arameans were afraid to help the Ammonites. From First Chronicles Some time after this, King Nahash of the Ammonites died, and his son Hanun became king. David said, I am going to show loyalty to Hanun because his father Nahash was always loyal to me. So David sent messengers to express sympathy to Hanun about his father's death. But when David's ambassadors arrived in the land of Ammon, the Ammonite commander said to Hanan, Do you really think these men are coming here to honor your father? No, David has sent them to spy out the land so they can come in and conquer it. So Hanan seized David's ambassadors and shaved them, cut off their robes at the buttocks, and sent them back to David in shame. When David heard what had happened to the men, he sent messengers to tell them, Stay at Jericho until your beards grow out, and then come back for they felt deep shame because of their appearance. 
When the people of Ammon realized how seriously they had angered David, Hanun and the Ammonites sent 75,000 pounds of silver to hire chariots and charioteers from Aram Nearim, Aram Meeka, and Zobah. They also hired 32,000 chariots and secured the support of the king of Meeka and his army. These forces camped at Medeba, where they were joined by the Ammonite troops that Hanun had recruited from his own towns. When David heard about this, he sent Joab and all his warriors to fight them. The Ammonite troops came out and drew up their battle lines at the entrance of the city, while the other kings positioned themselves to fight in the open fields. When Joab saw that he would have to fight on both the front and the rear, he chose some of Israel's elite troops and placed them under his personal command to fight the Arameans in the fields. He left the rest of the army under the command of his brother Abishai, who was to attack the Ammonites. If the Arameans are too strong for me, then come over and help me, Joab told his brother. And if the Ammonites are too strong for you, I will help you. Be courageous. Let us fight bravely for our people and the cities of our God. May the Lord's will be done. When Joab and his troops attacked, the Arameans began to run away. And when the Ammonites saw the Arameans running, they also ran from Abishai and retreated into the city. Then Joab returned to Jerusalem. The Arameans now realized that they were no match for Israel, so they sent messengers and summoned additional Aramean troops from the other side of the Euphrates River. These troops were under the command of Shobak, the commander of Hadadezer's forces. When David heard what was happening, he mobilized all Israel, crossed the Jordan River, and positioned his troops in battle formation. Then David engaged the Arameans in battle, and they fought against him. But again the Arameans fled from the Israelites. This time David's forces killed 7,000 charioteers and 40,000 foot soldiers, including Shobach, the commander of their army. When Hadadezer's allies saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they surrendered to David and became his subjects. After that, the Arameans were no longer willing to help the Ammonites.